Let's look at how the Gibbs function varies with both temperature and pressure. Okay, let's do these individually. So first, let's look at the effect of temperature. So we go back to our fundamental equation, dg is equal to minus stt plus vdp. And since we're just looking at the effective temp and we're keeping the pressure constant, we can get rid of this term. And we can see that if we change the temperature, we're going to be changing the Gibbs function. So if we integrate from g at t1 to g at t2, then we've got to be integrating the temperature from t1 to t2. Let's go ahead and do the integral. So we end up with g at t2 minus g at t1 is equal to, well at this stage we have to stop and say is entropy constant. If it is constant, we could pull it outside the integral and we would just get the entropy times the temperature difference. Okay. If we had a situation where the entropy changed significantly over the temperature, we would actually have to plug in uh, some sort of expression for temperature. We actually covered how entropy varies with temperature uh, in the earlier half of this chapter. So that covers temperature for small changes in T. If we had a big change in T, we could rewrite that equation as G at T2 minus G at T1 is equal to the negative integral of entropy from T1 to T2. Now let's look at how G varies with pressure at constant temperature. So we start off with the fundamental equation dg is negative sdt plus bdp. We're not changing the temperature so we can integrate both sides. So we integrate from g, oops that should be at p2, g at p1 to g at p2 and we're going to integrate V from, or VDP from P1 to P2. And once again, there's two situations, one in which V is constant and one in which it's not. Now, let's imagine this equation, of course, is in general true. Let's go ahead and bring that up here and say that G at P2 minus G at P1 is this interval. Okay, that's the general case. That's an always true, basically. Now let's look at some specific cases. Well, we can imagine a situation where, let's do a case where we're looking at a gas. Okay, well, if we're doing a gas, then we can use the ideal gas law. So we can say that G, P2, G, P1, that the difference between those, well, we can just replace V with NRT over P when we're integrating from, when we're integrating from P1 to P2. And we already stipulated that we were working at constant temperature. So we can pull out the NRT those are all constants, and we just have the integral of dp over p. So we're going to end up with the log of p2 over p1. So if we just want to see how the entropy of a gas, and we did invoke the ideal gas law, so we better say that we're talking about a gas that's behaving ideally. There's a ex simple expression for how the Gibbs function will change, and we can see that if the second pressure is higher than the first, then this ratio is greater than 1, and this whole term is positive, and our Gibbs energy goes up. So our Gibbs energy goes up when we increase the pressure. That was for a gas. Let's look now at something other than a gas. So let's go ahead and increase P on a solid 
or a liquid. So something that's not compressible, something that's not very compressible. And remember, we're still looking at constant T. So we're going to increase the pressure and see how that affects the Gibbs function. OK, that's just supposed to be a Q. OK, so we go back to the general equation, G at P2 minus G at P1 is equal to the integral of the volume dp integrating to p2 from p1 and now what we can do is say well if it's a solid or liquid that we're increasing the pressure uh, on then the volume of that solid or liquid doesn't change very much so an approximation we can make is that the Gibbs energy increases but that the more volume is constant, so we can pull that outside the integral. And then we're just integrating dp, so we just get the pressure difference. So this is um, good as long as the volume of the substance doesn't, as long as the pressure difference is not big enough to make this volume change by something appreciable. So those are two cases for how the Gibbs energy changes with uh, pressure.